Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on System Performance and Optimization. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our Practical Application Exam 22702, Section 2.4, where we need to look at the system performance and optimization features, the arrow settings, indexing settings, UAC, sidebar, startup file maintenance, and background processes. With Windows Vista, we got a number of enhancements in the operating system, but the one that was most obvious to everyone are the graphical en enhancements through something called Aero, A-E-R-O. Aero provided us with a nice graphical interface and one that gave us some additional capabilities, but it also made had some requirements where we had to make sure that our system and our video and our processor were able to support this. These are very, very specific features, and they're only for Windows Vista. You do not have Aero in your Windows XP or Windows 2000. You need at least a, window, a one gigahertz processor, one gigab gigabytes of memory in your system, and a graphics card that has 128 megabytes of RAM on it. So already we've got a relatively beefy system, one that can handle this additional requirement of this graphics. Also, the graphics processor that you are using has to be DirectX 9 compatible. It has to use a driver model that's specifically written to be able to use this called the Windows Display Driver Model. You most often see this written as WDDM. In hardware, it has to have something called Pixel Shader 2.0, and you have to have it turned up to have a color depth of 32 bits per pixel. You'll be able to see most of your arrow settings if you go into the desktop and right mouse click and choose Personalize. You should be able to see some very specific settings in there regarding allowing Arrow to do different things on your Windows environment. And that'll also allow you to set your desktop up whether you'd like to use Arrow or not. You do also have that option so that if you'd like to turn it down so that it doesn't use up so many resources on your computer, you can do that. Another thing you may have noticed in Windows Vista is that it always knows what programs are available. When you go down to the Start menu, you can now simply type in part of a name, and it will automatically find a document or a program or anything that may match what you're typing in. Well, for your system to be able to do that so quickly, it first has to already know what's on your system and have an index of all of that information. Otherwise, it may take a number of minutes to cycle through every possible file on your computer. And if you're trying to find something quickly, that simply isn't, isn't even applicable. What we'd like to do is to be able to look and see what is indexed on our computer. And we can do that through the control panel in the indexing options. Let's look at the indexing options on my Windows Vista. I'm going to go to my Start menu down here, and I'm going to go right to my Control Panel. And inside my Control Panel, I've got it set up in this classic view, which allows me to go right to the indexing options. And Here they are. This is, shows me that there are 281 items that have been indexed on this computer, and the indexing is not happening right now. It's complete. You can see that the uh, places where it is indexed are the offline files, the Start menu, and the Users folder. That makes sense. That's where almost everything on our computer that's outside the scope of our programs and everything else, our Windows operating system, are usually in those particular locations. You can modify any of these. If you'd like these offline files to be different, you can modify that piece of it. I have the option, of course, to show all locations. It's going to pop up a UAC box for me that says, that I need to look at common indexed location settings. And yes, I will allow that. And it will show me all of the indexed locations that are available to me. I can also have a look and, and uh, change some of these settings and, and have a look and see whether they are excluding anything or not. This does not index every possible file, just the ones that normally we would want to look up. If you ever want to change any of these things, you'd like to pause the indexing. If it's in the middle of an indexing process, you come right back to this control panel indexing options screen, and you can do all of that from here. One of the things you may have noticed when we were changing some of those indexing options is we got a box that popped up that said Windows needs your permission to continue. And you then have to provide the right credentials to be able to allow the system to do that. 
That was an intentional screen put up to make us pause and think about what was going on at that time and then decide if we wanted to continue down that road. That's a new feature called User Account Control, or UAC. Instead of everyone running as an administrator, as many people tended to do on Windows 2000 and Windows XP, with Windows Vista, you don't run as an administrator. Instead, you run as a normal user. And if you're doing something that appears that it needs some additional capabilities, something beyond the normal things that you would do day to day, Windows stops and prompts you, is this something you really would like to do? The primary reason behind that is security. Unfortunately, with Windows, a piece of malware might get on your computer. And if you are running as administrator in Windows XP, for instance, it has complete access to your system and can change files and modify pieces of the registry without you even knowing about it. Well, that doesn't happen in Windows Vista. Instead, Windows Vista recognizes that something that you're running is trying to change something in the registry, and it will pop up a box and say, were you trying to change the registry? Should we allow this or not? And then you can decide at that point whether you will give it the correct credit credentials to be able to allow the registry change or not. It's another way to allow more security on your system. So if you're modifying the firewall, you're installing applications, you're scheduling tasks, or you're changing some pieces of the user information and many, many, many other things, you can go and have Windows prompt you for all of that. By default, it's going to stop what it's doing and pop up that box. And you have to then decide whether you want to allow Windows to continue to do that or not. When many people installed Windows Vista, they started seeing these pop-up boxes whenever they wanted to do things that they felt were relatively benign. And they got a little frustrated with it. It became a big deal. It was a different way of doing things, and people were not accustomed to it. So one of the things you can do is turn on and off UAC completely for a user by going right into the control panel under User Accounts for that particular user. And one of the things you can do is say, turn the user account control on or off directly from here. If you'd like to really modify this a little bit more and still allow people to use that UAC functionality, but maybe disable it for certain other things, you can change the local security policy of your computer and decide what you would like to be prompt on and what you would not like to be prompted on. Let's look at my local security policy. I'm going to start here on my Vista machine. Let's go to our control panel under our administrative tools. There is a local security policy option. And the local security policy is extensive. In fact, just changing it says we need your permission to continue because this is where you can enable or disable quite a number of things. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. You can look at all of these different policies that you might have in here. And for UAC, we're very interested in the local policies that are on your computer and the different security options available to those local users. And here they are. You can see who gets to do what and how different options are there. With each one of these things, you may want to do different things. Uh, digitally signed communication if a client agrees, or change a security setting so that it either is allowed or disallowed completely. There you can also prompt for credentials. And when that happens, you get that message on the screen that says, if you are ever performing this particular function, I would like to have the UAC pop up a screen asking if you'd like to continue. Or if that's OK, you can automatically deny it, and you will never be prompted for that, and it simply won't allow it for that local user. Different, different security options in here have different things that are available to you. So you can see this is very, very extensive. And normally, you're going in and changing one particular thing rather than going in and modifying every single one of these. But if you ever need to modify it instead of turning UAC all the way off, this is exactly where you'd go. Windows Vista also included a new feature called the Windows Sidebar. You can put a lot of widgets on the side of your screen and have a lot of different capabilities that are there. You can access that through the All Programs Accessories Windows Sidebar. Let's look at my sidebar. I'm going to go to the Start and to our All Programs and our Accessories. And inside there, indeed, is Windows Sidebar. Let's click that. And it's going to pop up all of the things that I have on my sidebar on the side of the screen. It starts loading all my widgets. And now we can see the uh, calendar that I have here, the clock that's on the screen. I can move these things around. You can make it a little different. And you can have this sidebar set up in a lot of different ways. You can also, if you hit this plus sign, it'll load up a bunch of new gadgets that you could put on here. And maybe I'd like to add a CPU meter to this. I can right mouse click and add it. And it'll simply put it into my sidebar. And now I have a way to check and keep track of what's going on on my computer just by looking at the sidebar that's there and making it very customized for what I'd like to do. 
It's a great functionality and something that's always there, and it doesn't get in the way. I can always pop up another program right on top of this. For instance, let's uh, load up our Internet Explorer and have it start that piece. It's going to start my browser up, and you can see I can still maximize my browser. It won't get in the way, but right behind the scenes, it's always there if I ever want to see what's on my desktop. To remove or change these widgets, I can always hit the X button next to them. I also have the ability to right mouse click, and you've got other options for what you can do with that individual gadget or what you can do for all the gadgets that are in your sidebar. Just another way to make the user interface in Vista a little bit more usable, something that you can always have available on the Windows sidebar. A very easy way of managing what files start up when you start your computer is using a special group that's in Windows called the Startup Group. Anything I drag and drop into that Startup Group will begin automatically whenever I log into my computer. And all we have to do is find one of the programs or utilities on our system, drag them, and drop them right into that folder. Let's look at my startup group on my Vista machine. If I go to All Programs, here's my startup group, and there's nothing in there right now. One of the things I could do is grab a program like Internet Explorer, and I'll grab it, and I'll drag it right down here. And when I move right underneath the startup group, it says I can move this to startup. If I hold down the Control key, it will copy it to startup. That's what I'd like to do. And now every time I start up my computer now, it's going to launch whatever I put in that startup group, in this case, Internet Explorer. Although our Windows desktop may be relatively empty and it doesn't look like anything is going on, behind the scenes there are a number of background processes that are executing. If we'd like to see more of those, we can go into our Task Manager. And if you really want to see what's running on your system, you can look at your Processes tab. If you want to know what services are currently running, there's a Services tab that shows you all of those. Let's look at our Task Manager. I'm going to right mouse click down here on the bottom bar and click Task Manager. And we'll have the task manager come up that shows us we are applications tab, no applications running right now. But here's our processes tab that shows us all of the different processes, the executables that are running right now. It even gives you a description of what those are. So we can see exactly what's running right now on the system. Some of these things are the Windows Defender that I'm running here. My Windows sidebar is running. There's a task scheduler engine. So we can see exactly what's running on our computer. The Services tab, notice there are a lot of different services. This is what you would see if you went to your Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and in Services. And you can see whether a service is running or not. You can see its process ID and what the name of this service is. So our DHCP client is running right now, but our wired auto config function is stopped right now. So this may be a good way to tell what was running right now as far as a service without having to go all the way into the administrative group under your control panel just to start up the services view. You can also add other columns to this to show you how many resources is that individual service using? How much memory is it using? Is it communicating to a disk drive? Uh, is it using how much memory and how much? How often is it using that? So all of these resources and information is always available in your task manager. And if you want to know the performance of your computer and what's really using the most amount of memory or CPU cycles, that's a great place to do it. Let's review what we've learned about system performance and optimization. Our first question is, how can you disable the UAC, completely disable it for a user? And the, the best place to go to do that is inside the user accounts. You go to the user account piece, and there should be an option inside of your control panel users to turn the user account control on or off. The next question is, where is the Windows sidebar located? What menu selections do you go through to turn on or the Windows sidebar or select the Windows sidebar? And the answer is all programs, accessories, and it's the Windows sidebar. And the last question, where can you change your indexing options? The indexing is something that's done behind the scenes. It occurs every so often to a lot of different files that are on your computer. And you can modify those options under the control panel under indexing options. That covers what we needed to know for our 22702 section 2.4 where we needed to know how to look at system performance, optimize different parts of our computer, and get an idea on how we can change and modify all of these different settings. If you'd like to look at any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.